Hello and welcome. In this video, we will export a tree map from the Arboreal node. We will import and use the map in Unreal Engine and use it as a guide for the placement of our trees. So open up Gaia and your terrain. Of course, the terrain I have created is included in the course and you are free to use it. The file is named final underscore terrain dot tor. So first thing, find the arboreal node, right click and mark for export. In the build settings, we now have our arboreal node. Click the text that says all. And we only want to export the trees map. So deselect output and colorize. Only exporting and trees should be checkmarked. Then set your build resolution. Choose one that matches Unreal. So in my case, I'm using a 4K resolution, 4033. Then make sure to set your build destination so you can find the file after. And simply start build. In the course resources, I also include this 4K tree map. Building the 4K file takes quite a while, so I've edited to speed up the process here. If you want to, you can also change the format of the image file, but TIFF is fine, so I'm sticking with the default. So the build is done, and we can take a look at the map. By default, it's called arboreal tree mask. So here we have the tree map in Photoshop. And I just wanted to show you what it looks like. You don't actually need to open it in a image viewer. As you can see, we have one pixel for every tree. And now we can easily use this map in Unreal Engine uh, to guide the placement of our trees. So open up Unreal Engine and use whatever project you have, if that is the project from this course that you've been following or your own project. Just make sure you have the same terrain imported uh, which you have exported the tree map for. So the two matches. So here we have the terrain, no materials and no trees. Let's start by simply importing the tree map file. You can simply drag and drop the file from Windows Explorer into the content browser, or you can click on import and navigate to the file. I have my file right here. After the import is done, double click the file to see its settings. And we are going to change the compression setting. Select grayscale. If you ever have trouble finding a particular setting, use the search bar at the top here. You could have simply typed compression and you'd easily find it. Okay, so now we can save this file, save, or we could use Control S, close. Because we are going to use the procedural content generation framework to place our trees, go into edit and plugins, search for PCG and simply enable all of these. And you will be asked to restart the engine. For this example, I will use three assets from FabStore. If you want to follow along and use the exact same one, go to window fab search for temperate and this is the one i will be using just for this example temperate vegetation spruce forest if you want to use any other resource feel free any other asset you want to use if you search for quixel you will find a lot of high quality free tree assets like European beach, European hornbeam, and there are also European black alder. I think this medieval village has some good ones. 
So use whatever you want to. It's it's not important. Once you found whatever you want to use, go back here. You simply click add to project after you purchased or added to your library. Okay. So now let's right click PCG PCG graph. We can call this PCG uh, trees and simply drag it into your level. It's denoted by a cube here. So the way the PCG works is that it will place objects within these bounds because we want trees placed uh, on our entire terrain. We have to increase its scale here, increase its bounds. So make sure it's selected and on scale here, let's try 2500, 2500 and maybe 1500. Let's zoom out here. And we can check uh, the top view. Simply place it according to our terrain. And check the left view. That is fine. It doesn't have to match the bottom of the terrain. It just have to cover it. Make sure everything is within bounds. Let's go back here to perspective. Everything looks good. Okay, so double click the PCG to open it. We need a couple of nodes, so let's just add all of them at once and then connect them after. Simply right click and start typing to find what you need. Get texture data. Transform points. Projection. Static mesh spawner and get landscape data. So the way we will connect these first we want to get our texture data and going to transform points. Uh, these two can just move out of the way and into projection from transform points get landscape data. Let's place it here somewhere and then we want to spawn our meshes, our trees. So uh, click first on get texture data. There is a texel size setting here. Increase this to a thousand. If this setting is set too low, uh, things will get really computationally expensive and the editor might crash. Uh, the texel size of one texel in centimeters used when calling to point data. So basically it has to do with how this node samples our texture data. And if this number is too low, the density of our meshes will be too high. So uh, in essence, too many meshes will be spawned. And too many samples is computationally expensive. So keep it at 1000 for now and we will adjust it later. Uh, we can do a save here, Control S or simply just File Save. Let's connect Get Texture Data to Transform Points. You simply left click and drag out a connector and out from Transform Points to In Projection and out to static mesh spawner and this get landscape data will go from out and to projection target go back to get texture data where it says texture and none simply click and type trees or actually it's tree arboreal tree mask select it then select the static mesh spawner and under mesh selector it says mesh entries. Click the plus sign here and we simply then add 
one element to the array. We can see it starts at index zero. We could add multiple if we want multiple meshes to be spawned, but we will start with only one. Expand index zero here and expand descriptor. And where it says static mesh, click none and simply search for what you need. I'm going to use uh, smpine zero one. Now we can restore this down. We already have trees spawning. Right away we see a couple of problems. Uh, first of all, the trees spawn where there should be water. So obviously the PCG is not respecting our tree map right now. Uh, there is also one more issue. Uh, the trees spawn at an angle and that's not how trees grow. They grow straight up even though the terrain is angled. At least most of the time. So we'll have to fix this. It looks kind of corny. Uh, 